The ability to take action sets you apart from anything and to not let obstacles hold you up and like, okay, this is the next thing I get to figure out. Great, let's do it. Let's see how I can turn this hard thing into something not that big of a deal. This girl has completed over 70 half marathons in 17 states in less than a decade. I've loved watching her journey in entrepreneurship, having a best friend who I can tell anything to and kind of link arms with during this roller coaster journey of entrepreneurship, and to see the force for good she is for pharmacy owners in the world. Welcome, Dr. Tara Schneider. Thank you for joining me. Uh, I'm so happy to be here, Jamie. Thank you for that lovely introduction. <laughs> well, we know each other really well, and we do. So you need to tell everyone about your story because three years ago, we were kind of at a same, a similar point. We had both worked very traditionally for a long time and been good employees, but felt like, oh, is this, is this all in healthcare? Tell me, tell everyone about your history in pharmacy. Yeah, I graduated pharmacy school in 2011, like around the same time you did. And uh, went to work at a health system and started climbing the the ladder there. Um, you know, COVID hit 2020 and everything just got crazy, out of hand, stressful. We were furloughing. We were short staffed. It was like, what? what's happening with the world? It was just, you know, way too much. And I just saw this, you know, this pattern. I was just like, oh my gosh, I am always at the hospital, always on call. There has to be more. I want more in life. I need more. And my patients need more. They need better than what is here at the hospital. If I know your name as a patient at an over 500 bed hospital, that's a problem. You know, that means you're coming back frequently to, to see us. And that, that's not, that's not cool. Healthcare system is broken. You know, flip that to September of 2020, um, you know, listen to a Labor Day podcast interview. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is life changing. There's so much more pharmacists can do outside of just their traditional roles in the hospital and in retail. There's other things out there. You can run your own consulting business. You could start a pharmacy and do something completely different totally cool. Uh, you can work with patients remotely. I'm like, I want in on all of that. Along with you, you know, I was like, hey, Jamie, let's, you know, let's, let's do something different. And at the same time, we both started building our own consulting businesses and, you know, getting out of our traditional jobs because we, we couldn't unsee what we had saw. We both were like, there is something bigger out there. There's a cooler way of helping patients. Let's, let's go do that. So, I started TD Pharmacy Services as a way of consulting with physicians. And the State Board of Pharmacy in Oklahoma said, well, that's awesome. If you're going to do that, you're going to have to work under a pharmacy. So you need to open your own pharmacy. And I said, okay, I guess I'm going to open my own pharmacy. So wait, wait, let's just pause right here. The Board of Pharmacy said, okay, that's cool, but you have to run under a pharmacy. And you said like, okay, great. How do I open a pharmacy? Er I think 90% of people would have said like, oh, that's a door slammed shut. Not possible. Well, I tried. And you just didn't even let it phase you. You're like, okay, what are the next steps? How do I open one? Yeah. I was like, I read reading through the, you know, the board's regs. And I was like, okay, well, here's what I need to do. And then I was like, hmm, I guess I need like an, a, a space, right? <laughs> I have to go in really like a commercial space to make this happen. So yeah, so I found out a lot really quickly about um, commercial renting. And I got into a really cool business incubator with other entrepreneurs who had been in business less than two years and were building all kinds of really cool companies. And I was like, this is this is cool. These are my people. This is my tribe. We can all work together as entrepreneurs and help build each other up. So I joined, got my space, uh, got it inspected, and they checked it off and handed me my retail pharmacy license. And now I became a retail pharmacy. But I wanted to do it differently. I didn't want to dispense drugs. I didn't want to be open 
you know, 40 plus hours a week. So I made mine all a closed door. So people couldn't just like walk in and be like, hey, you know, I'm here to fill a description. And they're like, I'm like, no, you can't do that here. So a closed door, non-dispensing, all cash pharmacy. I bet most people have never heard of that before and haven't seen it in practice. So haven't even known that something like this is an option, right? Because I didn't learn about this in pharmacy school at all. This is all something you just created and figured out. Yeah. 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 I just decided that that was the easiest way with the least resistance so I could do what I wanted to do. Right. And I was just like, okay, got it all figured out. Now I have my, you know, my state license. I have my pharmacy NPI. I can go and do things. I can get contracts. I can get testing contracts. I can go work with physicians. I can go anywhere. Now I have this magic pharmacy license. So, and we both work in a similar way in that we are, I guess, are really risk averse and we don't like a lot of upfront costs. So we've both worked in a way that isn't, you start a business, but you don't have to have like buy the entire pharmacy and the, all of the supplies and all of the staff. We're both working pretty minimalist, and you did that really relatively quickly. It may have felt like a lifetime when you were living through it, because I know there were a lot of hoops to jump through, but how long from that first idea of like, okay, I guess I have to open a pharmacy, to being in business, how long did that take? Two months. (laughs) And the hardest part was getting someone to actually come inspect the space, right? So, you know, I found the space, it had all the, the wrecks and everything. And I was like, okay, yeah, th- this will work. And then I had to set up the appointment with the board to actually come and, and do the, the inspection and sign off. So yeah, it took too much. But yeah, when, when you're living through it, it felt like a lot. But yes, we're both really scrappy that way. I self-funded my entire pharmacy. So yeah, you think about when I thought about, oh, I have to open a pharmacy, my initial thought was like, that's a million dollars. And I was like, is it really? No, I don't, there's, there's, I don't need any of the drugs. I don't need any of the, the fancy counters and shelves and all of that overhead or, you know, 2000 square foot of retail space. Nope. I don't need any of that. I need what is required by the board somewhere I can have patients come in one day and enjoy the space and, you know, it feel like home. So yeah. So I created that. And it's such a fun, cool, like lean way to work that helps you get into business quickly and to start without a lot of overhead. I guess especially with n- neither of us having prior entrepreneurial experience, it felt like, well, this isn't a risk. It's just a matter of losing some time. I could have been watching Netflix and I'm learning a lot of new things. Is that how you felt? Because I know a lot of people are like, oh, I want to do something, but it's so risky. You feel like what you did in the first stages was risky? No, not really. I mean, I, what was I out? Maybe a couple grand. I was willing to, to lose that, you know, and, and, and to give it a try, you know, what's, if I, if I didn't do it, I wouldn't have known if I could be successful, right? Could I actually get this thing off the ground, you know? So yeah, no, I didn't feel like it was risky at all. It was, it was, it was the, the right step and in my, my whole entire body down to my bones. I felt like this was the right step. Yes. And that's how I felt that it was the right step, but there was also so much unknown that all I knew was like the one next right thing to do and like, okay, I want to help patients. So I'm just going to create a business structure and start helping my neighbors and then see what happens next. Like, is that how you felt? Or did you have like a nice five-year business plan and like knew in your bones that you would be here now? No, what's crazy is to get into the business incubator, I had to create a business plan. And so I had to Google, (laughs) what did this business plan look like? (laughs) I saw all these like, Oh my gosh, well laid out, you know, business plans, presentations. I was like, oh my gosh, that was probably the the thing that scared me the most. I was like, I don't even, I don't know what this is going to look like. So I was like, I'm going to create a one page business plan. (laughs) And I'm going to detail like five columns on exactly what I think was going to happen over the next five years. 
and put it all on just one sheet of paper. And, and that, that's what I did. And I had my interview with the business incubator. We talked about it. They liked where it was going. They saw how healthcare was broken as well uh, from their patient lens. And they were like, this is cool. We like what you're building. We like how you're changing it. That you see a need and you're just going there and filling it. And for people who didn't see your beautiful office space and how you're helping people, what did you do there? If you didn't have medicine, how could you help people, Tara? What services were you providing? Oh, tons of testing services and consulting services. So, yeah, so lots of, you know, respiratory testing, health testing, PGX, NGX testing, also doing just, you know, I, I started taking patients on like a membership basis too and going to their house and, and seeing them where they could come in the pharmacy and, you know, see me. So we started doing chronic care testing for, you know, diabetes, lipids, you know, those types of things, uh, iron deficiency, uh, vitamin D, you know, and really started diving into a lot of the more functional medicine stuff because that's what my patients were asking for. That's that's really what they wanted and they needed. And, um, you know, they they had the funds to do it and they liked talking to me and spending the time more than five minutes with their health care provider. Right. Uh-huh. And they're w- willing to pay for it. It was awesome. It was wonderful. Just think of it like a like a doctor's office. Like you walk into a doctor's office. That's what my pharmacy looked like. No, yours was way prettier than a doctor's office. Well, thank you. My doctor's office does not look like that. Yours is beautiful, like just aesthetically beautiful and simple and really shows how pharmacists can work in new ways, that we don't have to be tied to a physical product or even to medicine. I love that you've really championed point of care testing to bring these services to pharmacies and to pharmacists who are at the front lights of healthcare and are such a great relationships with patients anyway and to get out of just dispensing medication to help people uh, to test. Yeah, because then once you once you know your test result, then you can do something, right? You can solve people's problems. You know, give them the answers they're they're not getting because most healthcare providers with physicians aren't aren't testing, right? They don't have the time to do it. So pharmacists, pharmacies can fill that void and fill that need. And what I really like about your company is that it's able to pivot with you and that it's grown in some really cool ways because you started your company in Oklahoma. That's where your beautiful practice was. But then you ended up moving to Kentucky and you didn't have to like shut your business down and close everything and then start something from scratch. Yes, there was probably a lot of changes in like planting new seeds. But tell me what it was like taking this company that you've created and having it as an asset that could like physically move with you across the country. Yeah, that, that's the greatest feeling. Creating something that's virtual, that can move anywhere. Like it can, it can move across the ocean with me, honestly, if I wanted it to. And, you know, and I, I loved having my, you know, physical location in Oklahoma. It was a beautiful space for me to come work and, you know, do all those things. But, you know, Really, my asset, my my biggest asset is all online. It's all through my website, through my on-demand learnings, through my weekly calls with pharmacists that we do through Zoom, right? Uh-huh. So it's not, a, you know, you, you can join from anywhere. We have international clients. So we actually have people internationally coming to us and, and joining our calls. So it, it's the it's the best feeling. Uh, many of my clients lately have seen me take calls in hotel rooms. So every week it's like, well, where's where's Tara today? So that that is the coolest thing. And even my my patients that I, I still have, you know, outside of the Point of Care Testing Institute, my patients from TD Pharmacy Services, you know, I can I can still be with them, you know, virtually. And, you know, they can be in their their pajamas at home and I can be sitting here. It is so awesome having that. And it's also, you think about the overhead of it. It is so inexpensive to get going with a um, a practice that is all virtual. No, it's so inexpensive. You learn and grow so much that it feels like it's crazy not to try and not to take advantage of working in this new way with patients and as a white coat, because there's virtually no competition in this space. It's so um, open 
And there's so many different people you can help based on their needs and your interests that it feels crazy to not even try because really you just need a laptop and an internet connection and you can build something that you can sell that doesn't exist like in the real world. There is no physical product. It's amazing. It is. I mean, there's so many people getting into the virtual space and you probably know the statistics better than me, but virtual online learning is, I mean, it's just skyrocketing. It's probably a $500 billion business, if not more, you know, globally. I mean, it's it's crazy. People are looking for these services. And if you're not providing them, then they don't know where to find them. So you as a pharmacist, you know, if you have a unique niche, something you want to do, there's people out there looking for it. They're looking for you. And if you're not putting yourself out there, they don't know how to find you. So what advice would you give to someone who's like, oh, Tara, I'm with you. I feel this. I want this so much, but I have no idea what I want to do. I have no clue where to start. Will you share one, like how you felt like point of care testing was your thing? And two, what advice you'd give to someone who feels like they're on the edge, they're ready to take the leap. They just don't know what they want to get into. Yeah. Yeah. So how I knew point of care testing was my thing was I went to a physician and then this is what, you know, I was taught to do. It was like, okay, you go and you have like everything all lined out about what you want to do. And you might, you might not. And I just went and I was like, Hey, I have this great idea. I want to do remote patient monitoring and chronic care management in your practice. You know, here's what it is and here's how we could do it. And he was like, I have no clue what you're talking about. I know nothing about this. And he's like, what I need is to have my patients who need PrEP HIV tested every single month. Can you do that? I was like, yeah. (laughs) Yes. And then you go home and Google, how do you do this testing? (laughs) Yeah, exactly. So it's just asking those questions. Like, what does your market need? So I would recommend you go out and you talk to five people that you trust that are healthcare providers, professionals already out there being entrepreneurs in some way and say, you know, what, what are your pain points? What do you need help with? Now, how can I solve those things? Put that all together with your years and years of experience and training. We already went through all this school, right? And then and then create a service around it. And you know what? What you create initially isn't going to be what it looks like one year from now, five years from now, 10 years from now. It's totally going to change. And that's great. So, but you have to start. Just starting is is the key. Figuring out what your community needs and how you can how you can serve them. That's that would be my one thing. If you're like unsure about where you're gonna go or what you want to do, and get out there and crowdsource and say, hey, what what should I be doing? What you know, what am what am what is the need? And that's something I think we both kind of just did independently. Maybe because we didn't know about business plans or thought we needed like angel investors to run a big company. We just knew like, I just want to put myself in practice. And I've been so like with blinders on in this strange world of pharmacy, I don't know what's out there. So I'm just going to talk to people and they'll tell me what they want. And then I'll figure out how to give it to them in a really scrappy way. Like I have, I had no business plan and no, like I had a basic LLC and that was it. And like, okay, what am I going to do? I really don't know. But just finding that one thing that calls out to you or you think like, hey, I want to try this, putting your energy into that and just giving it a try rather than spinning and thinking of a thousand different things you could do and which one is going to be the best 10 years from now. Just start that one next thing and put all of your energy into doing rather than overthinking. Would you agree? Yeah, absolutely. You could spend your whole lifetime overthinking. The ability to take action sets you apart from anything. And so not feeling like you have to be a certain personality or a certain like intellectual. It's just the ability to take swift action and to, like Tara said, not let obstacles hold you up and like, okay, this is the next thing I get to figure out. Great. Let's do it. Let's see how I can turn this hard thing into something not that big of a deal. You know, it's kind of like an elephant. Like, how do you eat an elephant, right? One, One bite at a time. One bite at a time. Well, entrepreneurship isn't all roses and it can be really, really, really hard. What's the hardest part of this 
that you've gone through, Tara, that really made you question, like, do I actually want to do this or should I just go up, give up and go back to that safe job? Yeah. You know, there are, you know, why? It's just like anything, right? You know, there are good days. There are bad days. You're going to have weeks where you have tons of income coming in. And it's fantastic. And then you have other weeks where it's down and you're like, oh my gosh. But, you know, that, that is the, the hardest part because as pharmacists, we, you know, we are high income earners. So, you know, we're, you know, it's kind of like you expect this paycheck to be coming in week after week. That's very high, especially initially. You have to be prepared and, and ready for that to happen to where it, it takes a while. So what you do today will pay off in three months. You know, you're putting all this energy and effort into something right now that might not be making a whole lot of money. But if you're doing it right and doing it smart in three months, it will be paying off and paying off in dividends. I feel like the more you can embrace delayed gratification and not need your company to be performing at X level, like right out of the gates, it almost is easier to grow because you have no expectations forcing something that kind of, it's kind of like a plant or like anything organic. It just has to grow in its own time and trying to force it can just ruin everything. Yeah. I could take the the joy out of it, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, take the whole joy out of the experience of doing it and and why you're doing it. You know, you're not you're not doing this just to create another job that you don't like, right? No. You already had one of those that had benefits. You're creating this for for some bigger purpose. And you have a really big purpose now. You're traveling all over the country. You're helping so many pharmacy owners, presenting at conferences. Tell us what your little TD Pharmacy Services has turned into now, Tara. Brag a little. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So now, well, I still have I still have TD Pharmacy Services, but now me and my husband co-own Point of Care Testing Institute, where we help pharmacists globally implement point of care testing as a revenue stream for their pharmacy. And this isn't just respiratory. We don't even focus on on respiratory testing. This is so much more than CLIA waved and respiratory testing. This is the functional medicine testing. This is your chronic care management testing. This is really unique, cool devices that you can bring in the pharmacy and test patients in less than five minutes. There is so much out there in this world of testing and cool things you can build and you know partner your passions with your patients and your pharmacy. That's what we're we're doing uh, with pharmacies all over the place. And it's so much fun because everyone's building something cool and unique and different, but we're all building the same thing, right? It's all about testing and helping patients and, and doing it in a unique way and giving them services that they they can't get anywhere else. No, they can't get these services anywhere else. And I know some of the technologies that you use, and they're so amazing and can help bless so many lives. And so not only is it healthy for your business, but patients want these. They want this kind of care. They're tired of just going to the doctor and staying in managed sick care. It's such a cool time to be alive. And we're always being told to like practice at the top of your degree and practice at the top of your license. You're actually doing that and paving new trails for pharmacists to work with people and be an impact for good in their community. Well yeah. done, Tara. Oh, thank you. Oh. No, it's been it's been so much fun. And it's been so much fun going into these pharmacies, seeing how they operate and, you know, looking at what supplements they offer, meeting their patients, hearing their their stories too. Um, you know, and I know that, you know, by helping one owner, I'm impacting thousands of lives. It's so cool. It's just such a cool time to be alive and create something that didn't exist before with the power for so much good, especially for something that can be as confusing and overwhelming as point of care testing that pharmacy owners desperately need. And heck, even pharmacists, I shouldn't keep saying pharmacy owners, you as an independent pharmacist can totally do this too, just like Tara, to help people in a new way while doing it all right, checking all the boxes, keeping everything official. It's not that scary. And it's really exciting to have permission and a game plan to do something innovative and 
help people and also create this thing that didn't exist before. It's It's been very fulfilling to be a part of creation and do something that's not so left-brained all the time, like it's drilled into us with our degree. Yeah. Yeah, it, it is great. And you're right, Jamie. Like, you don't have to own a pharmacy or have a brick and mortar to do any of this. We have multiple clients in our membership that uh, they're doing it all virtually. I think it's it's so cool what they're they're doing and building and they're, you know, they may have started with PGX. So now they're like, hey, what other cool tests, you know, are out there that I can can bring into uh, my practice and help my patients with? And people are becoming more comfortable testing at home. They don't feel like they need to go into a pharmacy to get a test done, but they do want that pharmacist, that healthcare provider to analyze the results and make the the recommendations, which is what, you know, we help teach uh, pharmacists how to do. Well, and I don't know, it's if you're like me, and I think like most people now that we have Uber and DoorDash, we're used to having things come to us and like, I don't want to take my kids to a pharmacy. I just want that test to come to my door. It's like, one less thing I have to do. So it's really just meeting the needs of people and the way the world is working and being a part of that change in technology and convenience for people. It's so great. It really is. It is. And like, just like we're doing right now, right? If you're in Utah, I'm in Kentucky, we can do, you know, we can do Zooms. You can do consulting virtually. You know, you don't have to. If COVID taught us anything and opened one thing up for us, it is that you don't have to actually physically go see a healthcare provider to get care. That's the old system. And unless you physically need to be touched, you don't need to go, you don't need to go into an office. And it's such a great opportunity for us to take advantage of and be early adopters and like own this gift that we've been given. Tara, you're very clearly a wealthy white coat. And we've talked about this before. There's so many different wealths in life. What area of your life right now are you growing wealth that you're really just enjoying? So I'm really enjoying time with with my husband. We are, you know, we're traveling, we're going all over the place, we're getting to spend, you know, like most people, you think about it, they get to spend maybe like four hours a day with their spouse, maybe tops, maybe less. I get to spend all day with him because we work together. We travel together. We get to go do fun, cool things together, make memories. Yeah, I feel very, very lucky and, and fortunate to to have this time to to be with him. And you're making the most of it. This is the dream that people are always saying, like, I wish I could just have my own company and travel the country. And you're doing both. You're using your company to help you travel and doing it for leisure, too. And I'm not kidding. Probably every other week, at most every three weeks, Tara is in another place in the country and she's actually doing it. And not only leisurely traveling, she's running all these half marathons with Chuck and staying very active. And it just feels like a dream that you would read about, like, oh, if I could just quit my job and own my own company and be with my spouse and like travel the country. You're living that dream. And I'm so proud of you. So this is just a congratulations for being brave enough to do it and making it happen. Well done, Tara. Oh, thank you, Jamie. Yeah, we are. Well, uh, I think it was two weeks ago. We traveled three different times in one week, which is, you know, but it's, it's fine, right? It's like, what day is it? Who knows? But we're together and it doesn't matter. And you're just living a really cool life and growing and helping people. So well done, Tara. I'm so proud to know you and have you as one of my best friends on planet Earth. I'm cheering you on. And thank you for sharing your story and that it's very possible for regular old pharmacists like you and I used to be to do something really cool in really relatively short amount of time. And for those of you interested in all the things Tara is doing, we'll have her social links below. So you can click on those to find out more about point of care testing and her thoughts and ideas that she's sharing online with the world. Thank you for joining us today, Tara. Oh, thank you so much, Shami. It was such a pleasure talking to you and catching up. Always. (laughs) 